fishing gadget comes in handy to give an estimate of the depth by attaching it to a fishing pole and casting it over the water. You might look silly fishing in a sinkhole, but it will safely give you the depth of the water. So by using this gadget, we ascertain that the water in the Oxford sinkhole was about seven meters deep. And that doesn't sound that impressive. But that isn't the true depth of the sinkhole. Recall this diagram. If the opening above the void becomes plugged and the hole is filled with water, seven meters is only representing the depth from the plug to the surface of the water. So the true depth of the sinkhole remains unknown. So to better understand the risk and extent of the sinkhole in the park, the town of Oxford brought in some consultants to do a more, a more thorough investigation. And the consultants completed a series of geophysical surveys along with five geotechnical boreholes to investigate the subsurface. You can download this report at the above link uh, from the town's website if you're interested. This map shows the location of the geophysical surveys and boreholes and both seismic and electrical resistivity surveys were undertaken uh, to help develop a picture of what is going on beneath the surface around the sinkhole. A lot of interesting information was gathered by the study and here's an example of one of the geophysical profiles from the survey. The location of the sinkhole is projected onto this section for reference uh, shown by the blue bar along the top. The area of the sinkhole corresponds with an area of low resistivity or high conductance and also a, along a break in the seismic contour. The location of the boreholes were selected based on these anomalies in the geophysical surveys and we were expecting the boreholes to intersect gypsum or some other soluble bedrock but what came up in every single hole was surprisingly either gravel, sandstone or conglomerate. And these aren't rocks that typically dissolve away and lead to sinkholes. So we know we have to have soluble bedrock at some depth, but it must be deeper than the deepest drill hole, which was 44 meters or 144 feet. So what is going on there? We know from the drilling that there's a layered package of soil, sandstone and conglomerate, presumably above a void at depth. The roof of that void collapses and a sinkhole forms. The geophysical surveys were able to profile the upper 10 to 25 meters of material and the drilling went down to 44 meters. So the cavity collapse must be at a depth of that or greater. The true underground extent of the sinkhole remains unknown, but it's deep and it's big enough to create a hole over 40 meters in diameter at surface. But the texture of the rock at the bottom of the deepest drill hole has a texture that may represent the leftover material from where salt was dissolved away, the crud left over, if you will. A uh, university group is investigating this further, um, but this could likely represent the beginning of the depths of dissolution and potential cavity formation. What we did learn, however, is that in the park, a thick layer of soil, sandstone, and conglomerate, 44 meters thick, was enabled to hold up above a growing cavity below. And this type of sinkhole can therefore be classified as cover collapse, which is the most dangerous type of sinkhole to form due to its often sudden and unpredictable and sometimes catastrophic appearance. Here's an overhead shot of the sinkhole from earlier this year. It is likely that all the trees and the root masses helped to plug up the bottom of the sinkhole. Can you imagine the consequences if this hole had formed just a few meters to the left? Now, what about all that water in the sinkhole? At the time of the sinkhole formation, the water was very turbid. And if the water was upwelling in the adjacent water bodies. We'd expect to see that turbidity, but we didn't. The water seemed to be isolated in a system that was not immediately connected to the adjacent lake, although it is all likely connected at some greater depth. In this photo, there were several other sinkholes visible in the bottom of the lake, and 
The scallop shoreline morphology likely represents a series of older intersecting sinkholes. And although there are no obvious linkages to faulty infrastructure like broken water lines or drainage diversion to the formation of the sinkhole in the park, one possible contributing factor may have been the weather. In the month of July 2018 was very dry. And a decrease in the water table could lower the hydrostatic pressure and destabilize an underground cavity. Multiple high rainfall events could have further destabilized the area by increasing the pressure in the ground cover from the top down. So the red stars represent when the depression was first noticed after a period of drought and when the sudden collapse occurred several weeks later. And you can see there's a significant rainfall event that preceded the sudden collapse. And perhaps the area was further weakened by sheet wash draining across the parking lot to the back of the picnic area. Uh, it's impossible to say what the exact trigger was, but I'm giving you a few potential candidates. Now let's look at where the sinkhole fits in more regionally. We know from the geological mapping that the belt of extensive karst extends from the edge of Oxford for about five kilometers to the southwest. You could see a number of lakes in the background that follow this trend. The provincial government collected airborne LIDAR data after the formation of the sinkhole in 2018. You can see the sinkhole just at the back end of the parking lot. Uh, LIDAR is a type of laser imaging that can be processed to remove trees, vegetation, and buildings, revealing a bare earth model of the surface. So this bare earth model is excellent at identifying sinkholes and karst terrain that would otherwise have been obscured by tree cover. The Oxford sinkhole is visible in the peninsula in the park. And you can see numerous circular features to the west, all of which are sinkholes of some type. Some of these are ponded with water, while others are just cone or saucer shaped depressions in the ground. Okay, so I'm going to hit play on this video and the view will shift to the west following the belt of karst and keep your eyes on the number of sinkholes that are visible. Now the view will zoom out and zoom out again. And the LIDAR reveals a well-defined zone of cars with hundreds, if not thousands of sinkholes. So looking at this, is there any surprise that the Oxford sinkhole formed where it did? Down in the bottom left of this map is Black Lake. And this is Nova Scotia's deepest freshwater lake. It has recorded depths of 70 meters or 230 feet, thanks to a number of intersecting sinkholes. And now I'd like to bring your attention to another lake in the Karst Belt called Slade Lake. Slade Lake is located about two and a half kilometers southwest of Oxford and is about one and a half kilometers long and 200 meters wide. And you can see that the lake sits within the belt of extensive karst surrounded by numerous sinkholes. And it was brought to my attention in early May uh, this year that the water had suddenly drained out of this lake. The lake was full to the tree line in September of 2019. And compare this to September 2020, where much of the lake bed is exposed. It was a dry summer here in Nova Scotia but the drought wouldn't be enough to account for the amount of water lost. You can see another lake in the background, and that is still quite full despite the dry conditions. And the vertical drop in the water level 
at the eastern end of the lake is at least 11 and a half meters or 37 feet. Just a couple of photos of the dry lake bed from in June. Gypsum within hydrate nodules, oak crop in several areas of the lake. And this differs from the Oxford sinkhole where no evaporate bedrock is visible at surface. The type of sinkhole in the lake bed is more like a dissolution or cover subsidence sinkhole instead of a cover collapse. Although it is possible for a cover collapse situation to develop. And here we can see signs of fresh sinkhole activity. But again, this isn't the same type of sinkhole that formed in the park in Oxford. There is no thick layer of cover uh, obscuring the gypsum. And the water in this part of the lake was about 22 meters deep when I was there last. So how much water is missing from the lake? Uh, my colleague Peter Horn collected topographic data across the lake bed using a drone at the end of May this year. The resultant contours give us the shape of the lake bed that is now visible. Unfortunately, it doesn't give us the shape of the lake bed underwater, but we can use the data to calculate the difference between the lake as of the end of May versus when it was full the previous year. And to do that, I converted the contour data to a topographic surface using GIS and calculated the volume between the full lake level and the topographic surface. So the resultant volume was 783,000 cubic meters. So that's how much water is missing. Uh, keep in mind that this number is based on survey data collected at the end of May, but the lake continued to drop throughout the summer, so the actual number may be much higher than that. So what does 783 cubic meters look like? It looks like 313 Olympic size swimming pools or 98 million toilet flushes or over a billion bottles of wine. And if you took those wine bottles and you place them end to end, they would almost make it to the moon. And maybe once we calculate the total volume loss after the whole summer, the number of bottles would actually make it all the way to the moon. Okay, Sally, poll time. Oh, how long would it take for Niagara Falls to fill Slade Lake back up? Would it be five seconds, five minutes, five hours, or five days? We have a poll. You can cast your vote. That's the polls started. Yep, yep. We're on 63% of people have voted. We're just going to give it a couple more seconds. Excellent. Okay, you've got five seconds to vote and then I'm going to stop the poll. Three, two, one. Can you see the results? I do not. Are they that's strange. Okay, so the results are 45%, no, 9% of people said five seconds, 45% said five minutes, 30% said five hours, and 17% said five days. Okay, well, the answer is 
five minutes.